Hey YouTube, Repo Man 64. All right, I want to show you something that Eco Symphony and I have been working on for a few days now. And uh, let me get this thing straight here. And there is a little something that we found. Um, I believe now I have all the Pentecosts in the right spot. I said I thought I had the first one, but the second was and third I wasn't sure. But I've got them now. But what I want to talk to you about is, and the light's bright. Let's see. There we go. Getting a sunburn. What I want to talk to you about is encouragement. Hang in there. There is a reason why these pieces of information are being given to us slowly. Like I said before, you're crossing a river and you're going step to step. And as you're going, you think, this is it. I, there's no there's no other step. I'm never going to make it to the other side. What's the point of continuing? And I want you to know that with every step, you are getting closer to the other side. And eventually, we'll re we will reach the other side. The rapture is going to happen even if nobody figures it out. It is going to happen very soon. All of the things that we were told to look for are, in fact, happening right now as we speak um it could happen right now as a matter of fact uh looking up brie at looking up uh asked i guess a lot of us to uh make a little 15 second compilation of uh jesus is coming he is at the door now it could happen today look up and then i added your redemption draws near so we all feel it. We all know it's coming. Now, the rapture is not based on a feeling. It, and it is based on the Bible, and it's based on us continuing to try to figure it out. And I'll tell you, I've been at a point where I'm like, okay, that's it. I don't, I don't see anything else. And then I'll see something. And like I said, I must have swapped 50 emails with Eker Symphony going back and forth over some something that we found and uh, she even made it a, a, a time chart of events that happened. And then I took her time chart and added it to mine. So, but let me show you this. This, this right here sums up what we're doing, why we're doing it. And you think that there's nothing else and that maybe we should stop but then something comes along to entice you to continue to go and i want you to watch this little video that's on youtube and uh the the football player is us it's the christian the, absolute best. the coach that's yelling at the football player what you want to go to the 30 I can go to the 50. Encouraging him to continue to go. I can go to the 50. There's no eyes on my back. Jesus. I think you can do it with Jeremy on your back. But even if you can't, I want you to promise me you're going to do The person on the football player's uh, back is Satan. Your best. Trying to slow us down and hold okay. us back. You're going to give me your best. We're blindfolded. I'm we're crossing you that river. All right, one more thing. Stone to stone. We can't see the other side. Why? We aren't supposed to. Point when you can go further. I'll show you this real quick. Jeremy, get on his back. <laughs> I get a good tight hold, Jeremy. All right. Let's go, Brock. Even well, hopefully this is playing volume. There you go. Volume. A little bit left. A little left. There you go, baby. There you go. It's going to be good effort. That way, Brock. You keep coming. There you go. It's a good start. A little bit left. A little bit left. There you go, Brock. Good strength. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, Brock. That's it. Forget the 20. You give me your best. You keep going. That's it. No, don't stop, Brock. You got more even than that. Hey, done. Just rest in a second. You got to keep moving. Let's keep moving. Let's go. Don't quit till you got nothing left. There you go. Keep moving. Keep moving. Keep moving, Brock. That's it. You keep driving. Keep your knees off the ground. Keep driving it. Your very best. Your very best. Your very best. Keep moving, Brock. That's it. That's it. That's it. Keep going. Don't quit on me. Keep going. The crowd keep sitting keep in the back of the ground. world. That's it. You're very bad. Don't quit on me. You're very bad. Keep driving. Keep driving. There you go. There you go. You keep driving. Keep your knees off the ground. Keep driving. Don't quit till you get nothing left.
Keep moving, Brock. That's it. That's it. That's it. Keep going. I want everything you've got. Go. Keep going. Sir, don't quit on me. You're very best. Keep driving. Keep driving. There you go. There you go. He's heavy. I know he's heavy. I'm bad out of strength. Then you negotiate with your body to find more strength, but don't you give up on me, Brock. You keep going. You hear me? You keep going. You're doing good. You keep going. Do not quit on me. You keep going. It hurts. I know it hurts. You keep going. You keep going. It's all hurt from here. 30 more steps. You keep going, Brock. Come on. Keep going. Burn. And let it burn. Oh, it's, burn. it's all hurt. You keep going, Brock. Come on. Come on. Keep going. The crowd's for your best. You're back. Don't stop. Keep going. Too hard. It's not too hard. You keep going. Come on, Brock. Give me more. Keep Look at the world watching us as we continue to go. They question why there's going to be some of them that start looking on and going, huh, maybe these people have something. Those in the background are the Alicia of the world. They're following but the Christian that only has Jesus is the one doing all the work. The fruit of salvation. We work because we are saved. We don't work to get saved. Look up, Brock. You're in the end zone. You are the most influential player on this team. If you walk around defeated, so will they. Oh, tell me you can't give me more than what I've been seeing. You just carried a 140-pound man across this whole field on your arms. Brock, I need you. God's gifted you with the ability of leadership. Don't waste it. Coach? Can I count on you? Yes. Coach? What is it, Jeremy? All I want to say to Wow. When you relate that story to us and Jesus is the coach and he's telling us and that's why we keep getting this little bit of information and that little bit of information and no, all of us, I'm not all correct. Um, all of these people that are trying to research are not all correct, um, but we're all working to try to figure it out. But we're not going to stop. Why? Because Satan is on our back and the world is watching us. So we're going to continue to do this and we're going to continue to try to figure this out. Nowhere in the Bible does it tell us not to watch. The definition of watching is not walking outside, looking up at the clouds. Even though there are people who, when they do that, see things in the clouds. And they'll take pictures, and I'll be like amazed at the pictures they take. I'm not saying that. I'm saying we've all been given a different style of gift. You would never shame another gift. But 
or because you don't understand it or it's different or it's a different understanding. So when I bring you my timeline, it's because what I'm seeing and everything I say is biblical. I haven't added anything to try to, to try to make anything fit. Every time I find something, like I said before, when I was working on the Pentecost, I, I thought I had the first Pentecost correct. Turns out I actually had the second Pentecost correct. And I actually had the third Pentecost correct before um, I tried to fix it all. But uh, Ikra Symphony, uh, I made a comment about, um, and I'll show you all this, but uh, it turns out that Pentecost is actually on Sivan 21, which is June 5th. And I'll show that to you right now. But that's why we keep driving forward. I relate the uh, rapture event to us crossing a very noisy river. You can't hear anything around you. It's foggy or you're blindfolded like the uh, football player was. You can't see the other side. You step from stone to stone with faith that you're heading in the right direction. And um, I feel that... Um, God is opening his book right now more than he ever has in the past. So let me go into the pictures. Let's start here. Now, several months ago, I had a dream. And I tried to articulate it. And I, I couldn't quite articulate it very well. But... This picture came up, I think, on Facebook. I don't recall where or on YouTube, but this picture came up, and I, that is where I was in my dream, right there. Um, in my dream, we were in some kind of a floating building or inside of a, uh, uh, how do you call, uh, a hot air balloon, but with a big, like a big area. And while we were inside, there were angels outside the window. We were high above the ground. How we were floating, I'm not sure. I thought Hindenburg, perhaps. I, I don't know what caused us to float like this. But children were being uh, hustled into the room. And our job was to hand these children out the window to those angels. And the angels would whisk them away. To safety. Where we were was not heaven. It was some kind of a... I couldn't describe it. Uh, and I talked to uh, Spinebreaker, who does interpret dreams. I don't have many dreams, but uh, he interpreted it. And he says, you are a watcher, and you are warning everybody. And um, you are in this world right now. This technically is a world. But as we continue to do this and we tell people about this and then just maybe just I I watched a YouTube video and I don't subscribe to the guy I watched his video and he said that all of these dates make us false prophets and that we should completely stop he said yes yes possibly some people did get saved but what of the damage of the other people that are saved and that's where when I when I heard that, I'm like, you've got to be kidding me right now. <laughs> you you've got to be kidding me right now. Once you're saved, once you're covered by the blood, once it's on you, you can't get it off. You can't wash it off. You can't sin it off. You can't be bad enough. Jesus didn't make a mistake when he put it on you, and you can't do anything to get it off of you. And if it's on you, you will change. Not overnight. You're still going to continue to sin, but you will begin to hate that sin. And over time, ultimately, just like the thief on the cross was covered by the blood, just like the Roman soldier that poked Jesus in the side with the spear and out came blood and water, proving that Jesus had actually died. He was dead. And that blood that came on him, fell on him, saved him just by the action of poking Jesus aside, saved that Roman soldier. So once you're covered in the blood, there is no work, but faith without works is dead. So the proof is in the pudding. If you're saved, you're going to do all kinds of works. You won't be able to stop. 
if you're not saved, you're going to do all kinds of works. You won't stop because you think that's what's going to save you. You have not trusted 100% in the blood of Christ. That once it's on you, it never comes off you. Once you're covered, you're always covered. So I go back to that YouTube guy and I will tell you, we are going to continue to look up high watch days. I'm not saying that what I found, I found the Pentecost. I don't know if it's a rapture day, but I found it. And we worked, I mean, like I said, we did 50 emails. I don't know, 25, 50 emails between me and Eager Symphony, working it back and forth and trying to pinpoint it. And what did that do while we were doing that? What did that do? I am so familiar now, so familiar with Leviticus 23. I know Leviticus 23. What happened as I was trying to figure out this Pentecost? I drew closer to my God because Jesus is the Word. The Word was made flesh. God is the Word. Jesus is God. He is God Almighty. He came here in the flesh to die for my sins. And as I went through that, I drew closer. It became a more intimate relationship. The more I study for a date, the more I draw closer to my Creator. And that is why we do this. There is nothing wrong. Now, I will never say definitively unless I hear it directly from Jesus. And even then, I'm going to be like, everybody else should have heard it too. Because Amos 3.7 is not for me. It's for all of us. And if he tells me, I would suspect that, well, I don't suspect. That's what the Bible says, Amos 3, 7. He'll tell us all. All of us are going to know. Um, when that moment comes, it might just be a trumpet blast in the last minute. There are no, um, from what I can read, there are n there is nothing else that needs to happen. There does not need to be a seven-day warning, a three-day warning. Uh, there does need, the only thing left that needs to happen is a trumpet blast that we will love the sound of and we will run to and they will hate the sound of it and they will run from. And uh, when that moment happens, poof, that's when we'll know. All right, let me get back to where I was. Ooh. All right. So, like I said, uh, this is this is some this must be planet Earth, and we're whisking these children away because the children would suffer, not the children, right? All right, who is Jesus? And my spirit hath rejoiced in God, my Savior. Jesus is my Savior, and Jesus is my God. You cannot say that unless you have the Holy Spirit. In you, if you cannot say that Jesus Christ is God Almighty in the flesh, the Savior, the Word, the Creator, if you cannot say that, then the Holy Spirit does not reside in you. If the Holy Spirit does not reside in you, it will after the rapture and you witness these things. There will be a great multitude that shows up in heaven on seal six. They will say it for sure at that point. Once they see the rapture, behold, God is my salvation. Jesus is God. I will trust and not be afraid. We will not be afraid when we hear that trumpet blast. And for the Lord Jehovah is my strength, my song. He also is become my salvation. This is a brand new Christian who realizes that Jesus is the only way and there is no other way. Okay, I'm going to go over Leviticus here real quick. I'm going to point out some key things that we found, and then I'm going to show you Ecro Symphony's timeline. This is the Passover feast. There are many things in Leviticus we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about the Passover, Feast of First Fruits, and the Feast of Pentecost. Okay, the Passover feast. These are the feasts of the Lord, even holy convocations, which ye shall proclaim in their season. In the fourteenth day of the first month, this is the day Jesus went to the cross. <clears throat> At even, 
is the Lord's Passover. At three o'clock in the afternoon, Jesus gave up the ghost on the cross on the 14th day of Nisan, which, if you start your year on the day of equal parts, like Jesus said, are there not 12 hours in the day? This is also the day of the four star Algenib uh, in the in the Pegasus constellation skirts along the horizon. This happens every year on March 16th. It has always happened from creation, and it will always happen to the end of the millennium. And you can go right now under date and time and pick a date, any date, and move forward. It'll only let you go 600 years forward, and it'll only let you go back. I think it's uh, I think it's 600 years back as well. But you have to take into account those 10 days that the Catholic Church changed time. But you'll notice that time doesn't change. It never changes. The earth is fixed. Just like the Bible says, that does not make it flat. <laughs> I don't want to get into a flat earth argument with you. I, I, You know something else? I heard a YouTube channel literally make the comment that if you think the world is round, then you must believe in evolution. That is the absolute silliest thing. I've heard sillier. That's not true. That is a silly thing to say. God created, in my opinion, and again, this is not a salvational issue. When we get to heaven, we're all going to learn. The only way to heaven is through Jesus. It's not through believing in flat earth or round earth. But what I have noticed that if you believe in a flat earth, you will make comments that if you believe in a round earth, then you must believe in evolution and you don't have faith in God. If you don't believe in the flat earth and you don't believe in the Bible and you're not going to heaven. I've heard these comments and it's absolutely ridiculous. They should never be made at all. I don't care if the earth is flat. I don't care if it's round. I think it's round. I think that... This is the north part of our planet, and I think this is how our planet spins. And as it goes around the sun, depends on where, what part of the planet gets summer. I think this points towards Polaris, which is Ursa Minor. And I think when you're down here, where is it at? In the land down under, in Australia, you can't see Polaris ever. You can never see Ursa Minor from Australia. You can't see it. God did not give that gift to you. Well, wait a second. Wait a second. Australia, he did give you a gift. We can't see the Southern Cross. The Southern Cross is down here. Australia, you can see the Southern Cross. That's the gift God gave you. We can't see it up here in the north. Canada cannot see the Southern Cross. Why? The planet is round. If the planet were flat, like a pancake, and Ursa Minor is up here, everybody on this flat Earth would be able to see Ursa Minor. Likewise, down here, the Southern Cross. Do we have land on either side? I don't think so. But again... I don't want to get into a flat earth argument, but please don't make the comment that if you don't believe in flat earth, you're not going to heaven. That's literally, you just literally said that you need more than Jesus, and that's just silly. If you believe in a flat earth, that's fine. I believe that if you believe on the blood of Jesus Christ for salvation, I don't care how many verses you find in the Bible, I believe that you're going to heaven. And when we get there, we're both going to look to see if the earth is round or if it's flat. But neither of us are not going to make it based on whether it is round or flat. Okay, let me get back to this. It just shocks me sometimes what I hear on YouTube videos. I'm just like, really? Did you just say that? Okay, these are the feasts of the Lord, even holy convocations, ye, uh, which ye shall proclaim in their seasons in the 14th day of the first month, Nisan 14, uh, is the Lord's Passover. Jesus died on the cross on a Wednesday. Let me show you this real quick here. 
I've had this issue uh, dealing with with uh, Facebook and uh, trying to explain to people. It's very difficult um, over Facebook to try to explain. 2022, the Gregorian calendar lines up properly with the time Jesus went to the cross. Jesus went to the cross on March 30th. It was a Wednesday by our by the way we call it i know it's not wednesday it is the fourth day the 16th is the fourth day sunday being the first monday being the second tuesday being the third wednesday being the fourth on the 16th every single year from now from eternity well not eternity from the creation of earth all the way up to the end of the millennium the 16th is the day of equal parts. There are 12 hours in the day and 12 hours at night. On the 16th, the four star of Algenib skirts along the red. That's what they were looking for. They were not up there looking for a crescent moon. That came about in 400 BC, forced on the Jews. They had this correct calendar um, before this happened. The, the Romans forced the Jews onto the moon calendar in 400 BC and that calendar stuck around for 350 years then Julius Caesar created the Julian calendar it was almost identical to the Gregorian calendar in 1582 uh, Gregory made the Gregorian calendar it's actually more accurate they had to move the date 10 days because the Julian calendar over the course of from 50 BC to 1582 1600 years it had moved out of season by 10 days so that's why they had to move it 10 days and they did in 1582 so the 16th irregardless it doesn't matter irregardless to whatever we want to call uh, the day of equal parts, it will be always the fourth day of the week. It is the day that God created time. On the fourth day, he created um, the sun, moon, and stars as time pieces. This is when time, man could not be created until time was created. That's why we weren't created first. We were created, uh, created the last on the sixth day because time had to exist. Everything had to be in place. On the 30th, Jesus goes to the cross, March 30th, down here. On April the 2nd, he finished paying for the sins of the world. He spent exactly 72 hours, three days and three nights, paying for the sins of the world. Well, I'm sorry. On the 30th, he said it is finished, but he went to lead captivity captive. He went to Hades, and he rescued the people in Hades. It was not... There is, a, there is a place called hell. This is not the lake of fire, but it is a, 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 a holding place that existed until Jesus went down there and took the keys to Hades and rescued those people. On the second, Jesus completes what he's doing at nightfall. On the second, on Saturday, it becomes Sunday. It becomes the third. You're going to see this again. This is going to happen again. I'm going to show it to you. So, when I say Jesus rose on the third, people say, well, that's four days. It is not. He completed everything on the second. And as soon as it got dark, this is the same exact scenario that we've had a problem with for so long about the Passover. They say, how did Jesus have the Passover and yet was the Passover? It's simple. The Passover meal happened at nightfall up here. On the 30th, he went to the cross. On the 29th, at nightfall, it became the 30th. It was the Passover. The Passover began on the 29th at nightfall. He had his Passover meal. Judas Iscariot um, sold him for, what was it, 30 pieces of silver. And they crucified him first thing in the morning. On the 30th, at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, he gave up the ghost before it became the 31st. On the 30th at night was one night. The 31st at night was two nights. And the first at night was three nights. The 31st, the first, and the second were the three days. As soon as the third day was finished, he rose on April the 3rd. 
Now, when Jesus rose on the third, it was very early in the morning, he told Mary, do not touch me, for I have not ascended to my father. However, Jesus spent the entire day being seen by the apostles and a variety of other people. But then we don't hear anything about Jesus. That's the first encounter. And I'll show you this on Eucharist Symphony's timeline. It's perfect. It's awesome. On the third, that's the first encounter. Jesus is the wave sheaf offering. The Bible says that it is also the week of unleavened bread. This week, all the way up to the 9th of April, is the time um, the wave sheaf offering happened. I don't know if it happened on the 3rd when he went to heaven, or on the 9th, perhaps at nightfall, because at nightfall, remember, it becomes the 10th, which is the first day of the week. It is a Sunday. It is the day that Jesus returned to Thomas in the upper room. Then... I'll show you this in Leviticus. What we missed is on the 10th, Jesus returns to Thomas in the upper room. Leviticus, Leviticus records that there is a day that you are to eat no bread. No bread whatsoever. That is another count because then it says in order to count, um, in order to count the... Uh, let me see here real quick. Yeah. In order to count the Pentecost, you must count 50 days. But on the 10th, it was stated that they are to eat no bread. I'm going to show you that this entire week was spent. And on Friday, on the 15th, Jesus went to the shore and told them to cast their nets on the right side of the boat. He was already on shore with coals of fire, cooking fish. He did not cook any of those 153 fish. He already had fish. And guess what he had? He had bread. There is a period of time here where they could not eat bread. There is also a comment, which again, Ecro Symphony found, that where they were, they could not go that far. There is a term in Israel called a Sabbath day journey. It is 2,000 cubits, 2,000 steps. They, you cannot travel more than 2,000 steps on the Sabbath. So that wherever they were, they had to be back on the Sabbath, which is the 16th. So on the 15th, on the 14th, sorry, on the 14th, they had been fishing all night long and they found nothing. Early in the morning, they were coming in with nothing. They saw Jesus on shore on the 15th with the coals and the cooking of the fish and bread. There is a law in Leviticus, which Jesus didn't come to break the law, that states on the 10th, some point between the 10th, but you start your count again on the 16th. So on the 15th, they come up to shore. He says, cast your nets on the right side of the boat. And they did. And they couldn't pull all the 153 fish into the boat. So they drug it to shore. On shore, they ate fish that had already been cooked. And they ate bread. They were not in the time of no bread. Then the Bible records you count from the 16th, even the morrow after the 17th, and you count down 50 days. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. June 5th into the 6th, I would even say June 5th at nightfall in Israel, becoming June 6th, is when Pentecost lands. Now, for me, we're already there. I mean, it's Friday now, right? Fourth and the fifth. We're there. Uh, this is Pentecost. This is the day the Holy Spirit God sent down. Is this, could this be the day that God removes the Holy Spirit from the earth? The restrainer. The Holy Spirit, remember, lives in us. It cannot be removed from us. Once that blood is on you, it cannot be taken off of you. Jesus sent the Holy Spirit down here to them on Pentecost. 
and I'm going to show you all this right now. Let's get back to the pictures. These are the four feet, and I read all that. Okay, this is the Passover feast, and I showed you those seven days right there, down there, just before seven days, ye must eat unleavened bread. In the first day, ye shall have a holy convocation. You shall do no servile work, but ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord seven days. And in the seventh day, it is an holy convocation. You shall do no servile work. So, seventh day is Saturday. It is always Saturday. Um, the eighth day would always be a Sunday if you start off on Sunday, obviously. So, they are ordered here to eat unleavened bread for seven days. The Feast of first fruits. Down at the very bottom, could barely, I guess I could have raised this up, but it says, And ye, in, in uh, what is it, Le Leviticus 23, 14, And ye shall eat neither bread. They are not to eat bread. From this moment, from the moment they are supposed to eat un unleavened bread, which went to Saturday, now beginning on Sunday, that means this moment here is the moment Jesus comes back to Thomas in the upper room. This moment here is where you are not there you're not to to eat any bread. It does not it is not the same as I think I heard Dr. Barry say this actually is the same thing. This is not the same as the week of unleavened bread. This is the week of no bread. Okay? That actually begins at Thomas in the upper room. Thomas in the upper room is a new week. It's a Sunday. This is a 7-day deal is happening and that seven days will end um when jesus appears on the shore on a friday because they had been out all night uh on a thursday okay let's keep going here the way yeah this is from the wave sheaf offering jesus performed the wave sheaf offering at some point when he rose on sunday when he told mary don't touch me to the point where he returned to Thomas in the upper room, eight days, and I think he did this actually on Saturday, on the Sabbath, after he rose. He rose on a Sunday, the Sabbath after. So, knowing those two dates, now you add here the 50 days, and you shall count unto you from the morrow after, the, what's the morrow after the Sabbath? It's Sunday, it's the first day of the week. From the day that ye brought the sheaf wave offering. When was that brought? It was brought on the Sabbath. It was brought the day before um, Thomas in the upper room, which was on a Sunday. And even unto the morrow after the Sabbath, ye shall number 50 days. Ye shall offer new meat, a new meat offering unto the Lord. 50 days. Remember that. After the two sevens, 50 days. Now, she... Again, Eager Symphony found this, finds this in Exodus 12. This matches, you see up there at the top, Leviticus uh, 4 through 8. Seven days you shall eat unleavened bread. Even the first day you shall put away leaven from out of your house. Whosoever shall eat leavened bread from the first day until the seventh day, that soul shall be cut off from Israel. So it's, it's reinforcing the seven days of unleavened bread. Here is her timeline. Now, she, like she says here, uh, Nissan 17 is April 2nd. It is actually uh, the, at nightfall on April the 2nd, becoming April the 3rd. Um, but she goes through this very detail. Jesus is on the cross. Let me enlarge this thing a little bit more for you. Jesus is on the cross. Three days later, this is his first visit with the apostles. This is the time he tells Mary not to touch me, for I have not risen to my father. He rises to God on that Sunday. This is a Sunday on April the 3rd. He rises to heaven. While he's in heaven for those seven days, he does the wave offering, which I think is done on the Sabbath at the very end, just before he sees Tom, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, Thomas in the upper room which is a Sunday again. Jesus disappears, a wave offering, no leaven for seven days. You find that in Leviticus 23.6. This is the second visit. 
Jesus appears in a locked up room with all of the apostles up there. And this is where I begin my count. But I find out that there is more time of no bread. They're not to eat bread. Now, it basically says Sunday, but if you were to count from the Sabbath after, if it's Sunday, you have to go all the way to Saturday and begin your 50-day count to bring you back to Sunday 50 days later. So where exactly this, I think that Jesus does the wave offering honestly on Saturday. On Sunday, he sees Thomas in the upper room. And on Sunday, I also think that is the day of no bread. But in here, the count will still continue from the Sabbath after. Jesus appears a second time for an unspecified length of time. Eat no bread for seven days. And again, that, I'm trying to find where it says no bread for seven days, but and, and it is seven days because it clearly says from the Sabbath after you begin your 50-day count. Peter and disciples fishing at night and catch nothing. I showed you that. It's in John 21, 1 through and 14. Another day goes by because they've been all night now fishing. And in the morning... This is the third visit from Jesus. Jesus' third visit with the apostles at the Sea of Tiberias. You find that in John 21.1 John 21.14. What is Jesus doing on the shore? Jesus is on the shore with bread and fish and tells his apostles to cast the net to the right side of the boat. You'll find that in Acts 21.9. Peter and disciples fish in the morning. So they... They, they have been fishing all night long. They have caught nothing. Jesus appears on the shore with hot coals, cooked fish, and bread, and tells them to cast their net on the right side of the boat. And they catch 153 big fish, so big they can't even pull it up into the boat. They have to drag that net to shore. This is April 15th, IR1. And let me see if I have the same exact date here. Hold on a second. Um, I have IR2 and April 17th because it would be the morning already, but we're really close on this. And again, I, you know, uh, days off is, is us still trying to research. So 40 days, now there's two counts that begin to happen here. At this moment where Jesus pulls in the 153 fish, two count, two different counts begin to happen. One for Ascension Day, one for Pentecost. I think that the name Shavuot is just, I don't know what the difference is, honestly. Um, I cannot, and, I'd be, and I would really like some input on the difference between Shavuot, Ascension Day, and Pentecost. And is there a third count going on here that I don't know about? But the 40-day count where Jesus and it was seen by many for 40 days. He was seen by everybody for 40 days. He didn't disappear for days on end and then, and then come back. He was, it's, this was contiguous. Um, Jesus, on the 40th day, last seen by many, he ascends. Let me see when I have Ascension Day real quick. Um, I have Ascension Day on Savon 12, May 27th. Yes, yeah, so we're just a little bit off there. But um, Jesus ascends. That's after 40 days. Now, from the, uh, at the Sea of Tiberias, where Jesus begins walking for 40 days, a 50-day count begins because the Bible clearly says exactly when no bread happens. I don't know, but I, it clearly says to begin your count on the Sabbath after, even unto the morrow, when you count 50 days, there is Pentecost. Pentecost will land on Savon 21, June 5th. So we're off by one day on Savon. But she she put this together, and man, did she really do a good job. I wish uh, I wish I could put something like this together and change it and move it around and, and fix things uh, instead of uh, white out <laughs> and all the stuff I do in my timeline. This would be awesome. So this... Are, these are some notes from Eker Symphony. Again, we emailed each other back and forth so many times when we discovered no bread. 
that it just blew our mind to realize that we, in fact, had not passed Pentecost, that the Holy Spirit had led us to something new. And then when we put it on the timeline, guess what? The other Pentecost fell perfectly in place, without a hitch, perfectly in place. Below are Jesus' three visits with the apostles, and they are as follows. The first visit, the first day of the week, on the day he resurrected, first seen by Mary Magdalene, and later by the apostles that evening. You have this info that Mary couldn't touch him as he hadn't ascended to the Father. As the wave offering, Jesus went to heaven. He was the wave offering. I think he did it at the end. He went on Sunday, but I think he did the wave offering on Saturday, I think. But I know this is the seven days of unleavened bread. Number two, eight days later. This is the day after the wave offering on Saturday. On Sunday, um, eight days later, when Thomas is in the upper room, then Jesus could be touched by Thomas, as you know. Number three. An unknown period of time passes between the second visit of Thomas in the upper room and and again, this is us still working on this. I know now that uh, uh, and Jesus by the Sea of Tiberias, but you can back this out. So for Jesus' third visit with Peter and the disciples that morning by the sea, Jesus tells Peter and the disciples, we know because the Bible tells us to count from the Sabbath after, which if this is... Any day of the week, it doesn't matter what day it is, but if it, if it is counting, it would. It doesn't matter if it was Sunday when he sees Thomas in the upper room or two or three days later, it doesn't matter. We still begin our Pentecost count from the Sabbath after, just like the Bible says. We were missing a week. And then right side side, and they were fishing and that night and caught nothing. They catch 153 fish. It is after seven days of no bread. As found in Leviticus 23:14, but here's uh, here's the key. Jesus is seen on the third visit that morning with a fire of coals with fish and bread. See if it was the day of the week of no bread, and Jesus is on the shore with bread. Guess what? That feast is over. That seven-day period has ended. This is the first day that they can. In fact, uh, eat bread. They could not eat bread. The Bible clearly says it in Leviticus. No bread, Leviticus 23, 14. So Jesus had bread when they dragged the 153 fish to the beach on a Yar 1, 30, uh, day 31, April 15th. This is after the additional seven days of eating no bread. And it goes into Acts 1. And Jesus is seen 40 days straight by many. That's the 40-day count that begins, and it is also when we begin counting Pentecost. We have two different things running simultaneously, side by side. We have Ascension Day and Pentecost. I'm still trying to figure out Shavuot, if it's different or if it's Pentecost, I don't know. I'm still trying to figure it out. This is after the additional seven days of eating of bread. Then it goes into Acts 1. Then Jesus is seen 40 days straight by many. The last day he is seen by many is Savon 10. After this point, Jesus and the apostles leave Jerusalem and travel to the Mount of Olives on the sixth day of the week. This was not, now what's the sixth day? Remember, that's Friday. Um, this is not on the same day that the apostles return from the Olivet back where uh, back were limited to a Sabbath day journey, which I told you is 2,000 cubits, 2,000 steps. If this occurred on the same day, a round trip, the apostles would have exceeded the Jewish limits of the law. So something had to have happened on Friday night to get there, but a Sabbath day journey after after sunset on Friday night becoming the Sabbath, where they could return as long as it was within uh, uh, 2,000 cubits. Jewish limits of the week. And then returned on the Sabbath, the 12th, which is uh, on the Sabbath. The apostles returned uh, to the upper room and rested the remainder of the Sabbath. This is not on Pentecost. 
as they had to wait not many days for the Holy Spirit to come. See, it separates it. Ascension Day is 40 days later. Pentecost is 50 days later. Now, from the day Jesus is seen by many to Pentecost, 50 days. 40 days plus one day journey to the up to the Olivet. Um, one day Sabbath day journey. This falls on Savant 20, June 5th. I have Savant 20 as uh, June 20. Uh, Savant t- uh, 21 is June 5th. But we are so close. Oops, I went the wrong way there. When they were looking up, they were not looking for a sliver of a moon. This is what they were looking for. They were looking for the four star called Algenib, which skirts along the horizon. It does this every September 14th, and it does it every March 16th. These are the days. Now, the day of equal parts only happens on March 16th, when the four star of Algenib skirts along the horizon. The day of equal parts happens on September the 24th, 25th. I don't recall exactly. Uh, Ten days later, after the four star of Algenib skirts along the horizon in September, It is not the same in September. It is the same in March. Okay. Let's see. And again, I would make an argument in the book of Jubilee 6, 36 and 37 tells us not to follow the moon because it will throw off the uh, the holy days because its cycle is 10 days too short at 354 days. The term new moon in the Old Testament is H2320. It means Chodesh, which is really new month. The Hebrew word for moon is Yerach. Yerach? Yerach? I I don't know how to say that exactly. Yerach, which is H3394, which is used... In Genesis thirty-seven nine, Deuteronomy four nineteen, and Joshua ten twelve, you have to distinguish between when Scripture is using Chodesh or Yerach. I don't know how to say that Yerach because these terms have different meanings. With Chodesh meaning new month, and oh, I'm going to say that word over and over again, isn't it? Yerich. Let's just say Yerich. Meaning moon, Chodesh is used in Psalms 81.3 and is mistranslated as new moon when this word does not mean moon. Another example is 1 Corinthians 23.31. New moon is used, but the word is Chodesh, which means new month. And then it goes on to explain in uh, 3.59 how they forced the uh, Jewish people in the Sanhedrin, which I said is about 400 B.C., and introduced them to the new moon calendar. That's where it came from. Everyone said, well, that calendar is over 2,000 years old. Yeah, it is. It's actually 2,400 years old. And it was forced on them. And a lot of them died because they refused to follow it. And until they get rid of all those who refuse to follow it, that's when it became. And it only was in play literally for 350 years. This moon concept, which everyone tries to hang on to so fervently, was literally only in play for 350 years. That's it. The uh, original calendar, I don't want to call it the Enoch calendar, God's calendar, the original calendar, starting the year on March 16th, when the four-star algenib skirts along the horizon, was in play from creation all the way up to 400 BC for about 3,600 years. And then Uh, The only change that was made was by God when he changed the head of the year from September to March. And then for 350 years, this moon idea came out. And then from there, everybody just really hangs on to that thing. Oh, they're going to go ahead and explain it. I thought I had cut that off. A fixed new moon calendar that is based on the combining observations of Earth, Moon, and Sun is still in use by Judaism, even to this day, for the determination of the first day of of the month. The term new moon or Yarich Chadesh is not found in Hebrew scriptures anywhere and the word Chodesh or month is in reference to the solar month. The Masoretes who were a group of 
Whitman, in the 8th century AD, translated the Bible and made many mistakes, one of which was the mistranslation of the word chodesh into new moon 20 times when it should have been new month or just month. Okay. All right. Where am I at here? Let's see. All right. I want to go into my time. I put all of her stuff on here real quick. Again, we start the year back here on March the 17th, Nissan 1. That's the first day of the year. The day of equal parts is the previous day. Happy New Year, St. Patrick's Day is the first day of every year. We go on 14 days, 14 days later, on Nissan 14, Jesus goes to the cross. This is March 30th. Three days later, Jesus rises. This is also the day the Bible records that the ark rested. Jesus rises, the ark rested. Jesus goes to perform. He raises on Sunday. He sees, tells Mary, don't touch me for I've not risen to the Father. He goes to heaven. He returns to Thomas on Sunday in the upper room. It's eight days later, but it's seven days in between, if that makes sense. I, don't, I can't count the same day twice or it'll just add up to too many days. So um, Thomas in the upper room was a Sunday. The wave offering, I believe, was done on Saturday. He rose on Sunday. That following Saturday on the Sabbath, Jesus performed the wave offering on our behalf. Thomas in the upper room. Then it makes the statement, you are to eat no bread. Is this seven day no bread? Or is this one day of no bread? It's irrelevant. It is relevant, but it is irrelevant. On the, I can't find the time frame because the Bible clearly says the Sabbath after is when you begin your 40 day and 50 day count. The Sabbath after, he sees Thomas in the upper room on a Sunday, will be a Saturday. On Saturday, you begin your count, and you count 40 days, and you wind up here on a Friday. Jesus ascends on a Friday. Nine days later is the Pentecost on a Sunday. Pentecost should always land on a Sunday. Remember I showed you that this year, the calendar, the Gregorian calendar is off by a day. As a matter of fact, it will not line up again until the year 2033. So I used the Gregorian calendar from last year because in fact, last year it does line up. On June the 5th in 2022, it lined up perfectly with a Sunday. So that's the, the Gregorian calendar uh, that I look at to make sure I'm on the right day with everything. Notice back here that in between the day Jesus ascends and Pentecost is nine, ten days inclusive. Right in the center is five months to the flood. Notice that that date is Sivan 17. From that day, June 1st, it is five months to the flood. And we're going to go and I made the mistake of continuing to do the count from the Sabbath after. It is a straight 50-day count. I believe it is a straight 50-day count after the Pentecost to the next Pentecost. When you do a 50-day count, the next Pentecost will land on Tisha B'Av. July 24th, the 9th of Av. This is the date that they went into the graves and in the morning they just covered up the ones that had died. This is the wheat offering. It is not ripe until 120 days after the uh, Jesus goes to the cross. You can see that's the date of 130 days. So it's just four days shy of, uh, of 120 days. The tops of the mountains are seen. That's of one. So Pentecost, the first Pentecost coming up here on Sunday is the barley harvest. 50 days later is the second Pentecost and it lands on Tisha B'Av. Then 50 days later is the next Pentecost, and it lands on September the 11th, the first day of creation. This is oil and wine. Oil and wine are pressed. Back here, wheat is crushed, 
and barley is shaken. Now, I noticed something down. I want you to notice this. This happens right here. Between the count of Jesus ascending is 40 days to Pentecost, nine days, 10 days inclusive, 50 days. Um, it's it's a 40 and nine. We come down here and it happens. I thought I fixed it. Did I fix it? It's 40 and seven down here. It's not it's not a Pentecost or or, or Ascension, but I just found it so cool how it also has those same type of 40 and seven days down here. But let's stick right here. We don't want to get too far down the line. Um, not giving up on uh, the rapture being right around the corner. I'm definitely not trying to look down here in, uh, in September, the very next thing, or in July, I mean, that would be the next Pentecost on July 24th. Um, don't want to go out that far. That's, a, that's almost two months away. That is too far. Let's see. Oh, this is where as soon as they come to the land, uh, John 21, they saw a fire of coals there and fish laid thereon. Remember, he was already cooking fish. Uh, this he has not uh, waited for those 153 fish so he can cook one of them. He uh, already had fish and bread. So the, the bread, the, the feast of no bread had passed. That's why Jesus was there with bread. Uh, four months. I could have sworn that I had, I don't even know where it's at now, four months. Where did I put that at? Oh, so, um, four months from the cross going forward is July 2nd. And then four months from there is the flood. So, Literally, this four months, I found it, but I'm going to work more on that later. Maybe this is why. Oh, this is why I can't see it. Ha, I had the wrong timeline up. 40 and 9, 40 and 9. Where's the 40 and 9 at? Maybe it goes back here. I don't know. I'll find it. I will find it later and get it on here. This is a... Uh, uh, I work to get it all put together all the times and you got to make sure when you're doing it that if it says that it's this far from this event and that it's this far from the head of the year if they don't line up you've done something wrong and I believe we have Pentecost accurate this time so my next high watch day not saying the rapture day but Pentecost is July I'm sorry is June 5th it is June 5th and uh, so uh, hopefully that, I know it's a lot of information and some of you are not into timelines and it is confusing. Um, I built it so I know it. Uh, it's less like building an engine, you know, once you start putting piece on top of piece, I could explain to somebody else how I did it, but, you know, I know every part in it. So anyway, just keep watching. I showed you a couple of very good examples as to why we keep watching. And watching again uh, is not just a matter of walking around, looking up at the sky. It is it, This is it. As we research this stuff, we are learning more and more and more about what the Word is. And the Word is God, so we are learning more about God as we research. So go to Okaya Place by yourself. Nobody needs to know, and you don't need to tell anybody. And accept the Lord into your heart. And uh, just keep watching. Maybe this is it, man. This is it. This is a, this has been a lot of work. Um, I've spent I've literally spent several sleepless nights trying to to, to uh, get all this put on here and make sure it all matches and there's nothing out of place and to explain it the best I can. And uh, but I'm going to that room when we get to heaven. When we get to heaven, I'm gonna give Jesus a big hug. That no doubt, I'm gonna find my grandma. I'm gonna give her a big hug, but then I'm gonna ask. I need to go to the room with the timeline because there's a room. There is a there is a room. I guarantee there's a room, and on the wall, in high tech, 
is going to be a timeline and it's going to show me every single detail and I'm going to be like, oh, I had that wrong. Oh, I figured that out, you know, and I'm going to, I want to go through that. Just remember, over the last 6,000 years, every single event landed within a 12-month segment. Years apart, I'm sure, but in a 12-month segment. Imagine all the events of the Bible landing somewhere between March uh, 17th and March 16th, every single year. And how many different events took place and how many overlap and how many had meaning of other events and, and just so much working. It's just, it's like looking, have you ever seen a clock work? There's a hundred little gears in there and each one does a, a thing to keep time accurate. And as it just ticks around, you're just amazed at how, you know, somebody put all that together in that fashion so that it would tell time perfectly. It's the same thing. Every gear must match the other gear in order for this to fall into place and it just sure does fall right nicely into place and as i learn new things and and i say well if i move that it's not going to fit but then when i apply it accurately i'm like they land on the exact days they should because i think i made that comment actually in the last video i don't like one of the pentecost because it wasn't landing where i thought it should and i couldn't it, it's like it's like a a, a clock Go right to a number, go left to a number, go back right to a number. And if you miss one or you make too many turns in between, you miss something. So the three Pentecost had to land perfectly to, to make them fall in. And they just, they sure did. They just landed perfectly. The first Pentecost being 50 days. The second Pentecost being Tisha B'Av, the day the, uh, the raven and the dove was released. And the third Pentecost, the first day of creation. You know, wow. So, all right. Uh, it's a lot to chew on. Sorry. <laughs> All right, we'll chat with you again later. Maybe not. Sunday's like in two days, so maybe not. I haven't heard a trumpet blast yet, but we'll see. We'll chat with you again later.